Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. I know the thumbnail probably got you and you're like, all oh, right, a cool battle. And you're like, what is this? You have a dirty head. This is not a fair comparison. I want to save the comments from coming in. First off, it is sort of a battle, I guess you could say. But really, I'm just going to give you details on both heads. But it's not truly not a fair comparison. And what I mean by this is the AFR, obviously, the 235 here is brand new. This is a Brodix Track 1 233. And it has been mod hasn't been modified at all from the factory, except for the guys ran it. Now, I've since speed blasted it. And I don't do a harsh compound, so it doesn't look like... Um, I don't even do much, really, to the blasting on it anyway, just to knock off some of the big carbon. But it is a, as close as it can be from the factory. And I'm like, no, it's got rust on the seats. That actually happens whenever you blast. It gets rusted real quick thereafter. I'm going to be porting all of this anyway, um, so it is what it is. But it's pretty close to what it should be. Um, from the factory. It's just, it's not new. So it's not a true great comparison. The other major difference in this is um, the Rodex itself, as you can tell from the exhaust ports, are a standard port exhaust. And the AFR is a spread port. So you really can't compare those. I obviously will give you both the numbers and you can look at them, but it's not a fair comparison. The best one would be looking at the two intakes. Because in all fairness, these two products really were meant to be kind of competitors per se to each other. And honestly, and, and I want to start off also saying this, I am a dealer for both. I'm a dealer for AFR and I'm a dealer for Brodix. Uh, I say this because a lot of people do uh, videos about them, but they're really trying to sell them. I guess I'm trying to sell both, but I have no preference for either one. Both companies are great to deal with. Rodex has been around for a very long time. They're still family owned. They have their own foundry, which is a huge deal. The people there, the customer service is outstanding. Um, Jeff, the owner, he's a um, great guy. I deal with a salesman named Mark. He's also fantastic. And the one thing I do really like about their company is you really don't get a call service. When you call, someone answers. Now, it might be the secretary who will then make you might, might wait for this person you want to talk to, but you get a person. AFR, they're also great to deal with. They have great customer service. Um, some of those people have been there forever, except for I do have to say they have an automated phone system. But here lately, it's been pretty good and you get picked up pretty soon. It just, if it's me, I like the Brodox approach of just someone answering regardless instead of an answering machine first before it gets transferred to someone. But sign of the times. AFR is still a great company to deal with. They have always been good to me. They have got a lot of good uh, people that work inside their shop. And if you ever want to judge how good a product is, really look at the people, uh, the company, and how they treat their employees. Because employees ultimately are what makes the product. And I've toured both. And I probably should do a video of a Rodex one again to do another tour of that because you get to see their process. It's really nice. If you look at how they treat, both companies treat their employees, they treat them well, and it shows in their products. Um, Usually when you have products that are crap, it's because the owners make a lot of money and they treat their employees like garbage and they treat, and hence they put out garbage. So, but neither one happens with these two. But let's get to this video. Um, this is the AFR-235 full CNC ported head. I'm going to give you some details about the head and I'll give some details about the Brodix. Um, it has a 2125 intake valve, as does the Brodix. So the 2125 intake valve there. What does separate the two on this part is the AFR has a 45 degree valve job versus the Brodix 50 degrees. And the difference is um, typically a 50 degree valve job favors high lift flow and a 45 favors low lift flow. Also a 50 degree valve job will wear slightly quicker than a 45. It doesn't mean it's gonna wear out super quick at all. Um, that is a fallacy. Uh, on the exhaust side, they have a 1-600 exhaust valve on the AFR and also a 1-6 on the exhaust on the Brodix. The Brodix has a 45 degree valve job on the exhaust and so does AFR. Now the chamber size, this is different. Now, you can tell the chamber design by it's looking at it is much different than the Brodix. The Brodix is more of a kind of a, like a D um, shape. And I do like this chamber, even though this one looks way fancier. Um, I like this chamber. I've seen some pretty good stuff from this, but I've also seen good stuff from this too. This chamber is different. Size-wise, this AFR comes as a 70cc chamber stock. The Brodix is a 68cc stock. However, both of these 
can be ordered and custom and you can have a smaller chamber. Brodex actually has a stock one, um, stock part number for a 64 cc chamber. Um, AFR doesn't. However, you can order from me or from any dealer and you can have them make a smaller chamber and they'll charge you for milling and it gets the chamber size down. Brodex will actually even mill further if you chose to do that with theirs. Um, I think they can angle mill them down into almost into the 50s. Um, AFR maybe. But those are, of course, are much more expensive processes. Now, the even though the valves, we just talked about the sizes, here's the other major difference too. An AFR, this is an AFR intake valve. It's nice. It's a nice valve. Let me see if it can get it to focus correctly. It's got a back cut and terrific. So does the um, Brodix. It's got a back cut right there. That's looking good. But the big difference is the stem diameter, which the camera will not focus. There we go. No, maybe not. The AFR is an eight millimeter and the Brodix is 11 30 seconds. 11 30 seconds was a stock size for small block Chevys. Eight millimeters is a stock size for an LS. So you might say, well, what's the difference? Well, the diameter being less on this AFR valve has a couple benefits. One, the whole valve becomes lighter than the Brodix one. And the other thing is that stem takes up less area in the bowl and here. So in theory, it should flow more. Uh, and I guess you could say it is a little bit weaker than 11 30 seconds as well, but honestly, you don't really have problems. I will say though, in my porting stuff, usually if I'm upgrading people, I will put a 5 16 intake guide on the intake and leave the exhaust at 11 30 seconds. I don't see any real benefit to going to a smaller diameter on the exhaust. Yes, it flows more, but you have to open against pressure on the exhaust. So I prefer the bigger stem. Anyway, that's just me. Now. Let's get to the tail of the tape and some other stuff. The valve spacing is different for each one of these heads. And you've probably heard 40, 60, 60, 40. And you're like, what does any of that mean, right? Well, do not confuse the Brodix spacing and the AFR spacing at all. For instance, the Brodix, they are called a 40, 60. Let me explain what it means. This intake valve from stock is moved that direction. That's why the arrow is kind of pointing that way, 40 thousands. So they moved the valve over 40 thousandths on the intake. The exhaust got moved over 60 thousandths. This moves it away from the wall and lets you put a bigger intake uh, valve in. Now, that is not the same as AFRs. AFRs is reversed. They move their intake valve over 60 thousandths and their exhaust only over 40 thousandths. This does give it some advantages. One, on the AFR, your valve is further away from the chamber wall um, and the cylinder, so it's deshrouded more than it would be with the Brodix. Disadvantage, it's closer also to the exhaust valve, so this literally is the biggest intake valve you can kind of shove in here with the 1.6. So a 2125 and a 1.6 is the biggest you're gonna get to go with this spacing. On the Brodix, if you were to modify it, you can actually do a 215 intake valve and a 1.600 valve and they'll fit because it's not as close to the exhaust. Um, the exhaust, um, also, because it's only moved over 40,000, it's less routed than it would be with this. So there's some of it. Now I'm gonna roll over and show you some of the different views, but I do wanna talk about also right on here, the vein. The AFR uses this weird slick vein that goes off in this direction, similar to what you'd see from the LSs. This is one of those weird, and I mean, it's kind of a trick deal is that it tricks the airflow. It makes it kind of spike a little bit higher. Most don't. Brodix barely has this little T-drop behind here. I have to say, honestly, I wish they would carry it farther forward, like some of the better heads, like the Dragon Slayer has one that comes further forward, and that's a better design, really. Um, this is more common, and actually, if you track the airflow, it would go this way, uh, not that way, but it's an air manipulation type of deal. Now, I took measurements from both heads, and I'm going to go with them, over them with you so you can do a little comparison while I've got it on this view. So, this is the tail of the tape. This is the measurements from the Brodix, and this is the measurements from the uh, AFR. So, the first one is the throat. That'd be the area here. The Brodix measures 1.95 versus the AFR's 1.953. They're both about the same. 91.7% of the valve versus 91.9%, only 3,000 difference, pretty close. Next one's bowl, this one gets different. The bowl would be, this is the valve guide, you can measure directly across both these ways. That'd be perpendicular to the guide. On the Brodix, 
it comes in at 2.02 inches at 95% of the valve. But AFR is 2.133 or 100.3%. And you can see how much wider it is through the bowl than it is with the Brodix. You might say, well, what's that do? Well, it slows the air down to make the turn, so typically they flow more. The next area, so which I'm going to flip over the head to kind of show you. There we go. I measured is the pushrod pitch. I'm oh, sorry, the short over the area over the short side, which is really hard to capture this way. So I'm going to stop it and do a setup differently so you can see what I'm talking about. This was the next area that I measured, and that's the area over the short side. So the short side, I'm looking at the apex, which really... You know, this is an iPhone 14. I thought the camera would work better than my 12 and it would focus better. It doesn't. Um, so iPhone, I don't know if you ever listen to any of these videos. Your phones, your camera on the new phones does not focus worth a shit. Anyway, the apex is right here. So I measured that area. In other words, that window that would be here. Okay. Um, I did that on both the heads. So let me show you the Brodix one. So you guys got a good idea. Sorry about the whole moving camera lights around. There we go. That's the dirty port, but that's not the one I'm flowing, it's that one. That'd be this area. And you can kind of tell just by looking, you can look and see that's smaller, and it is. So if you look at the measurements, the Brodix 1.717 wide by 1.68 high, that comes up with 2.89 CSA versus the AFR 1.83 times 1.757, that's 3.21. Much bigger area over the short side, which means it should probably move more air. The next area that got measured would be the pushrod pinch. Each one is a, has a pushrod pinch. Both these heads being the same, they do not require shaft rockers. At least that's how they advertise them. Now, AFR does highly recommend that you do an, um, a shaft rocker because it puts things in better alignment. Here's the reason for part of it, which I'll come back to in a minute, because I, I gotta show you something first. So both of them don't require shaft rockers, um, but the area inside is different. So you know, looking from here across, which would be the narrowest point, and this window here is called the pushrod pinch. Same thing for the, and you can clearly look at this, which one looks bigger. If you said AFR, you're correct. If you look at the area for the Brodix, 1.165 wide times about two inches tall. Compared to that to the um, AFR, 1.3 wide, really wide, 2050 tall for 2.66 CSA versus 2.33. That is way tiny, way tiny, especially since these are supposed to be on engines that make a lot of power at a higher RPM. That's not enough cross-sectional area. It just isn't. Um, you might say, well, how's that? Well, if you ever got the Dragon Stars and the others, the floor is kind of dug out. Uh, both of these have what we call a ski jump. That's where the starts off here and it just gradually keeps climbing. If you did a dragon slayer or some of the other ones, it goes straight here and kind of digs in and then swoops up and over. Much better deal, at least to me. These ones are the same way. But AFR makes it up because they're wider. Now this is the reason why I said I'll get back to it. When they move spacings, it's like 60-40 versus 40-60, they move the rocker stud bolt hole too. So this got moved over. You know what that means though? If it moves the bolt hole over, it moves that over. So because that's trying to keep a kind of in alignment with the, the valve. So to kind of make up for it, they also gives you more room since it's moved over this way because the valve's moved over, you can move the push rod wall over. That's why they're able to get the 2.3. They also still recommend on AFR as a 50 thousandths offset on their stud mount rocker. The same thing goes with the Brodix because that got moved over because the valve got moved over. They actually have more area here, except for they just, it's actually relatively thick through here. So you could take more material out. Um, that's kind of a different deal. They should have done more. It's still more than if you got a regular Dragon Slayer. That's still way more area here because of the moved over spacing. They just didn't cut off as much. Maybe they were being general. I don't know. Anyway, uh, thought I'd tell you about that. It also means you use a, your your push rod holes or your guide plates sometimes are they're different but i do know that they move that hole so and they also move this hole both of the holes get moved but that's the reason why if you look at this one you could still use this one looks like someone has shaft rockers that are on it because that's a 
it looks like the shim for a shaft rocker, but these holes are moved if you do a 40-60 versus standard spacing. That's why you can't use the same stud girdle either. So anyway, looking at this, uh, it looks like, just from what I'm seeing, I'm betting this AFR outflows it. Now, I'm getting ready to flow it, and I'm going to show you the results. Um, but it really does look like the AFR has more area and should move more air. Now, I want to point out a couple other things I measured. The short side of deck, this is how tall the short side is. If you look at the Brodix, it's 1.03, but look how small it's 0.9 inches from the short side apex to the deck, which I'm really talking about here to the deck surface. Milling can mess that up or affect that too, but it gives me a general idea. You could tell that short side's taller on the Brodix than it is on this. So you might say, well, then how come if this head's so much bigger in every bit of areas, it's only two cc's bigger? Now, the port length is the same for each one, so how can that possibly be? I mean, even look at the dividers, it's different. The wing, that wing, let me move my camera again, or my light, sorry. If you look at that wing in the roof right there, that takes up space. So if you pour it CC wise, it's smaller than what it actually should be because that wing's taking up space. That's the reason why you really can't use CCs to measure a head. Even if they're the same length, it's best to use measurements. Barry, let me get the flow of this and see how bad or good either one of them is. Thought I'd show, show you how I'm flowing it. Um, this is a 4155 bore, gonna use it for both heads. I also have, this is a projected tip spark plug. Some people use those, some don't. You actually flows a little bit more, like maybe two or three CFN more if you use a non-projected tip. But anyway, no exhaust pipe. Um, this entry is a 1207, but obviously that's not, this. these actual entries on the head are about 1206. But there's more corner radius. And because of the way they're shifted, um, I use this 1207 plate just because it's, it gives more room, so obviously I had to fill in some areas. So I made this side and this side work, but then I filled in the corners to make up for the corner radius. But of course, these ones were different, so I filled it in with clay. When I go doing the Brodix, I'm gonna use the same thing, because it's supposed to be about 1206, but I'm gonna use this 1207. This way, the outside is the same part that's pulling from. Uh, let me see if there's anything else to tell you real quick other than that. Oh, whenever I do flow the intake, it's on exhaust right now, because I just finished up. I actually put, uh, a wrench in between to kind of give more tension on the exhaust spring so when I'm flowing the intake it doesn't try to suck open that spring kind of throws your numbers that's how some people cheat you'll see it put two check springs but once there's a vacuum it will actually start trying to pull open the in exhaust valve while you're flowing the intake and it makes the numbers read higher so put a spring underneath it, it gives enough tension so that it's not trying to suck open so it doesn't make doesn't fudge the numbers but anyway, uh, now I've got to flow the Brodix and then I can show the results. The Brodix is up on the flow bench and I just got done flowing it, so I'm gonna show the results and we can compare those. So here's both flow sheets. This one right up here at the top here is this page is the AFR 235. This page is the Brodix 233. So we'll go ahead and compare them back and forth. If you look at 166 on the AFR to a 69 from Brodix, so Brodix get it there, but I really don't care too much about the one inch, a tenth of an inch valve lift. At two, 151 for the AFR to 135. That's really good. The really good one here, we had at 300, we're at 216 to a 197. That number right there is outstanding. That's super, super high. Even my good stuff is like 207. So that's a really strong number there. 197, that's not bad. So pretty good. At 400, it's 255 for the AFR versus 246 for the Brodix. Very good number. Now, from this point on, the numbers get a little bit closer, though, I will say. If you look at 500, the AFR is doing 290 to a 285 from the Brodix. So they're somewhat close. At 600, the AFR does 311 compared to a 309. So the only two CFM difference there. At 700, we're at 318 on, or 319, you can call it 319 on the AFR compared to a 314, about five CFM difference. And then at eight, 325 to a 314, about a 10 CFM difference, 315. And at peak, which is nine tenths of an inch valve lift, um, the reason why I stopped at nine is because I couldn't go to one because the AFR still was hitting the retainer. The Brodix would go, but wouldn't be a fair comparison. 329, that's really strong there, really good to a 316. 
So we can compare those two because that's somewhat how they came. And I should have pointed out, we can compare these numbers, but let's be honest, this head has been used, this Brodix one is. So it's not a 100% fair advantage to Brodix. But I have never flowed another Brodix one before. I have flowed other AFRs, and this one's actually um, pretty good. It's actually a little bit better than the last time I flowed one, by about 4 CFM. I do know that AFR is constantly evolving how they do the CNC program to make the transitions better and different things around the valve job. And it seems like it's paying off because they do flow a bit more than what the last that I had done. It's really good. We look at the exhaust. There is no comparison because the AFR is a spread port. The Brodix is a standard port, but you get some ideas. I'm just gonna go through some of these numbers. The 400 number from the AFR is 204. That is strong. Uh, the Brodix is 179. But if you look at peak numbers, 239 from the AFR to a 247 from the Brodix. So really, really good. Um, so anyway, hopefully that gives you some numbers to think about. And now there's two other heads that might fit the out of the box class in the 230cc range that are CNC ported. And one of those is supposed to be here on Friday. So the other ones that would fit that market would be the Trick Flow has a 230cc head. Um, a, a customer is sending me one down to valve job, but it's completely stock. He's ran it, so it'll be much like this one. I'm gonna flow it after it's all cleaned up and you'll get to see it. Um, that would be about in the same range. The other one, which I probably will never see, is a Profiler 235cc CNC ported head. Those would all be in that same range and I probably will never see that one. But if I did, I would share it with you. I know you're thinking, well, man, you've got all these subscribers. You I bet you manufacturers just pounding down your doors to send you stuff. They don't. A lot of this happens because customers have sent stuff in for me to work on. And so that I get to share with you, which brings me to my next thing. If you like this content, I know a lot of people ask you to like and subscribe. That's great. But if you really like this and you wanna see the channel grow, here's one thing you could do. Uh, a lot of people sell merch, and I, I'll happily sell you a shirt, but if you really want to help out this channel, help out Wine Gardener Racing, the business in general, instead of buying your parts, say, from Jags or Summit, even if it's like a timing chain, whatever, I can get any part that's out there. I will happily sell you that part. Now, it may cost about what it costs from Summit, maybe a tick more, but the proceeds go to help this channel grow and my business in general. So you get to see more cool projects like this. It beats me saying, why don't you buy a whole bunch of merch from me or please uh, like, subscribe, and join my Patreon. Instead, you're already buying car parts. You're just sending them maybe a, about the same, really. I'll be honest with you. It's pretty close to the same amount, maybe a tick more. And then I get to make some money. I get to share with, uh, get to make other content for you guys for you to share with you. So if you want to help, that's probably the best way. You're already buying car parts anyway. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching this video. Remember, I'm no Superman, and you guys... Take care.